Hi, I am Jacob William Robertson. I am a graduate student at Texas Tech University. I am working in the field of ceramics, and currently I'm working on a body of work that involves several large wall installations. The piece that I'm working on right now is made up of these small fluted uh, pinched clay vessels that, that have a, a, a carriage bolt running through the middle of them attached to the wall. They come together to form this larger mosaic style piece that will consume a large portion of the wall. And I have always been attracted to atmospheric style firings. That's a, a firing that the colors on the surface of the clay are responsible from the the effects that are happening with inside the kiln. It's not necessarily the surface of the pot, the glaze or anything like that. It, it comes from the atmosphere that's created inside that kiln or pit or sagger, whatever that might be. These that I'm attaching to the wall are sagger fired and they allow me to get this random, not random, I know what I'm going to get, but I know that it's going to be diverse and it's going to be unique to the individual piece and then I can bring them together and they work in this sort of harmony. The sagger is a lower temperature firing that allows me to get away with a lot of uh, risk in the work. It survives and it also makes them fragile. They're not as hardened as they would be if I went to a higher temperature. So they become this soft yet fragile form that is attached to the wall and has this presence but moving away from the presence, it, 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 it is, is this fragile thing. So if you ran up and, and grabbed it, it would, it would crumble in your hands. That ephemeral strength is really important to me, and it is, I find it interesting in, in the work that I'm doing right now. It's a balance between something that is imposing yet fragile. This form especially is, is, I mean, chips of it come off as I attach it into the wall, and they kind of coat the ground beneath it so you're literally sitting above the the damaged pieces but yet it's 15 feet up on the wall and it overpowers you so it has i would say strength but also fragility that that kind of balance together i i want it to be a space that is inviting uh that that you walk up to it and you can lose yourself examining the small details it has a peaceful quality. So I want it to, to feel like a natural phenomenon that you can go up and, and you, can, you can forget about the troubles that you've been having, the, the, the things you've been thinking about, and you can lose yourself in this work and become completely disconnected from, from yourself in, in a moment. Uh, not lost, but, but meditative. At times it's frustrating, at times it's uh, painful, but the repetition certainly is meditating. It, it becomes that rote process. I think anyone that's worked uh, a menial job or, or, or any, any base level thing that you just start to do the thing without thinking about it. And there's several points in this process, you know, when it's attached to the wall, when it's made, when it's screwed together, that become just that rote motion and feels impersonal in that moment, which is, which is cool because I can remove myself from it. Uh, but then there's also the, the other moments that are more uh, active and engaging the firing process. I need to be present for mentally and I need to understand what I'm doing with the kiln. Whereas, you know, once it gets to the, the wall, it's, it's, it's mechanical, but it's cool to see it grow into the, the larger structure that it is. I think I have a lot of different things that I pull my inspiration from. I've, I've had a lot of comments and, and critiques and discussions with other artists where I use a lot of natural tones. And I think that certainly comes from the time I've spent in nature. I find it to be a very peaceful place a lot of the time. My, my favorite spots are, are vistas and ridge lines where you can see for miles and everything else just kind of drops away. The immediate drops away where you can see you can see so far and it kind of makes you feel small but in a comforting way uh, and so I like to pull those colors and, and feelings hopefully into into the piece um, the, the one I'm currently working on this this piece on the wall uh, definitely has this kind of barnacle aesthetic that uh, I think
think comes a lot from working uh, and uh, being in the water a lot. My family growing up, we, we were always on boats and uh, swimming and uh, lakes and oceans and, and that that aesthetic also has creeped into to my subconscious and has certainly shown up in this piece. The shapes, I like them to be this loose, organic, some place between alive and stationary and inert uh, that, that makes them feel mysterious, I think. At any point, they could get up and, and, and leave the piece of their own accord. I want it to be an investigative experience, but the idea is to is to come up to it, approach it, and and then lose yourself in it. I wanted to create a space of peace. A lot of people have experienced uh, turmoil and and other things, uh, especially in the recent months. But you know, historically, it, it, this is not necessarily a new time. Uh, I wanted to create a space that people could feel safe and peaceful in and lose themselves in this mosaic wonderland. Uh, yeah, I, I came in late. I uh, switched to art major my second semester of my sophomore year. I was a communications major, and I was just bored out of my mind. I was doing the go through the process because that's what you do after high school. You know, oh yeah, you go to college, okay. I took a year off in between, but I, I landed back in college and I took an art class as an elective and had this moment of, man, everyone here is so weird and it's fantastic. It felt like a, a community that I'd found that I didn't know existed or something that I needed that I didn't know I, I needed. It, uh, so I, I, I stumbled into that and I, I started drawing. Uh, that was where I started out. And then I, I found clay kind of through the progression of taking classes and moving through that process. I, you know, had uh, talked a little bit with some people that knew the faculty here and, and heard good things. And um, my, one of my former professors uh, had some connections here that kind of able to get me in contact with people. But the, the facilities are off the charts. You know, I can walk out into the kiln yard and I can see, uh, you know, 10 different types of kilns that are uh, a dream for somebody like me that just likes to play and experiment. And it, it kind of was magical walking in for the first time. I, I, I moved here before I ever actually got to visit. And so it was this like, man, I hope it's as good as I think it's going to be. And, and then you walk in and it's, whoa, we get to use all those? That's, that's awesome. So I think that's a big contributing factor to why, why I picked tech uh, to come to.